coronavirus and it continues to grow. Celtics guard Marcus Smart, two Lakers and members of the 76ers and Nuggets have tested positive for COVID-19. Jazz stars Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell and Nets star Kevin Durant also tested positive for the virus. The NBA has suspended the season until further notice. And on that note, we bring in our guy, Michael Wilbon. Michael, how are we doing? Molly, I'm doing pretty well. I mean, in these times, relatively speaking, I'm doing pretty well and um, trying to remain optimistic about a whole lot of stuff, even though people would say, well, there's not as much as particularly in the sports world to be optimistic about. I'm, I'm trying to maintain that now. No question. And I just need to say something, Michael. So we were having some technical difficulties the first hour. Stephen A. was hosting. He did a fantastic job. No surprise. Obviously, he hosts SportsCenter as well. But Stephen A., how are you going to lie to the American people and act like now you're finally the boss of the show? Now you finally have power. Nobody's buying that. Oh, no. No, I was just saying for the hour, for the hour, since you are not mm. here, because usually yeah. Max is a bit long-winded. Uh, Damien is very, Damien Woody is very <laughs> disrespectful, sort of truculent yeah. and what have you. Uh, Ryan Clark is smooth, but, but you know, a bit, a, a bit cerebral at times where he wants to uh, elevate his level of intelligence against yours. I guess he's contaminated by Max in that regard. So I was just letting everybody know that Molly mm. is always such a sweetheart that as nice yeah. as you are, I was not going to be nice, and they would yeah. speak when they're spoken to, period. And they did. I mean, they calling me long-winded, that's like Usain Bolt calling someone else fast. Will you stop that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was good television, to say the least, though. Michael, great yeah. to have you with us. Stephen A., I'll start with you here. Do you believe that the NBA season is over now that we're hearing more and more cases in the NBA of COVID-19? I'm holding out hope, uh, but my hope has diminished tremendously so, uh, or, or rather, should I say, uh, my belief has diminished. I'm still hoping against hope, but it seems very daunting. Uh, it's just when you, you know, just yesterday, we heard about uh, Lakers, two Lakers players have tested positive. Marcus Smart for the Boston Celtics um, has tested positive. Three members of the Philadelphia 76ers organization has tested positive. A couple of folks for the Denver Nuggets have as well. You add to that the cat from Detroit, Gobert and Mitchell in Utah. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, uh, you just you hear all of these different things. And, and, you know, you just say to yourself, how is this going to happen? I just you know, I can't see it. I watched uh, Rachel Nichols' great, great interview with Adam Silver the other day, the commissioner for the NBA. And just look at Adam's face. I mean, he's holding out hope. But just look at his face. I mean, to know Adam Silver um, obviously is an incredibly thoughtful person, wise beyond his years, an incredible leader for the NBA. Uh, but the reality is, is that this is a guy, and Mike Wilbon can speak to this very intimately as well. Adam usually is finding the silver lining everywhere. He's the kind of guy where if there is some hope to be had, he's going to grab at it, he's going to hold on to it, and he's going to find a way to capitalize off of it. That's what Adam Silver does. That's his specialty, one could argue. Yet, he seemed a bit resigned uh, to what we're all growing more and more resigned to because we've seen, uh, you know, the challenges that our federal government has had along with the rest of the world, we're seeing pictures of people on the beaches in Georgia making no sense whatsoever, not practicing social distancing, uh, distancing and what have you, just jeopardizing all of us. And you're just wondering how in God's name can you rectify this situation in time to have a season? I'm still holding out hope because of the leadership of Adam Silver and the priority the entire sports world and the world period has placed on this issue to assist the federal government and local governments in resolving this crisis, uh, but it seems very daunting to say the least. Yeah, this is, if there could possibly be a season, Adam Silver and Michelle Roberts, by the way, you know, Adam Silver will see to it that there is. He's, he's shown real strong leadership consistently. This is not the first time, but again here. The issue is leadership at the top levels of our federal government. The first cases of, of coronavirus were, for, were found here and in South Korea around the same time. I want to say maybe even on the same day, and I want to say that was January 19th. Uh, at any rate, look at the difference in terms of testing. 
South, uh, South Korea, so, how is South Korea so far ahead of us in terms of testing? We heard Trump say early on that everyone who needs a test will get a test, but that's in fact the issue here because the federal government has, has, um, has so mishandled the initial response and is unprepared in terms of tests. Uh, I, I don't know that Adam Silver can get his hands on the resources he needs in order to carry on with the season. Theoretically, you could. Theoretically, if you could get your hands on enough tests and not have, we talked about de Blasio's statement yesterday, uh, Stephen A., the mayor of New York City, and, and you felt he was politicizing something or, or, or making, score, trying to score political points um, by saying what he said. Um, but in fact, that's the reality. It, without tests, you can't, so theoretically, this is what you could do. You could test everyone on a team, everyone associated with the team who's gonna be traveling, have them quarantine, and, and the NBA is a league who can actually put that in place, right? And then once that happens, you can play in an empty gym. By the way, there'll be a real appetite for that because we're all sitting here at home and, and looking, especially sports fans, like starved for sports. So theoretically, that could happen. But what happens if you do that? De Blasio and others will come out and correctly say, why is this group getting it? Because they have, they're privileged and they have access that other groups don't have to those tests, particularly when elderly are at risk and people really do need the tests in order to locate and isolate the virus, right? And they'll be right, they won't be wrong. So, so, be, so it's not Adam, Adam Silver's fault at all. I think he's showing extraordinary leadership, but failure at the highest level of the federal government means that I, I would not be optimistic about seeing real NBA basketball to close out the 2019, 2020 season. Michael, where's well, your head I, on this? Well, I, I, first of all, a couple of things. The, 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 Talking about the number of cases in the NBA means nothing. Every industry has this. We don't know how many people in every industry, every workplace. That is not because the NBA has an increasing number. The NBA is going to have a, a bigger number than this. Just like every workplace in the world, workplace in America particularly, since we're talking about whether or not we're optimistic. I don't know if I want to use the word optimistic, but I like Stephen Day, I'm hopeful. But we get forgetting something. We're talking about here, not even about the number of tests available. We're talking about the flattening of this virus, right? We're talking mm -hmm. about what is going to happen. And, and, and the, the doctors that I've talked to, and, and there's quite a few, one of the things they mention is these things are seasonal. Every one of these pandemics has been seasonal. We talk about flu being seasonal. The reason they tied so much of this to May, June in terms of flattening is because of sun and warmth throughout America. And most of the country doesn't even get there until June and maybe a little bit later. So if that and that's just one of many factors, I'm hopeful because as spring becomes summer and you get that sort of sun and warmth in which the virus, if not cannot live, certainly flattens, maybe we can get to a there's no reason not to have a playoff. Um, and I, I don't see a regular season resuming, but there's no reason not to have a playoff in July or August or September. Why not? So we're talking about time here. And nobody wants to wait on anything in the world we live in today. And it, we are, when, Molly, when I said talking about trying to be in a better mood, we're talking mm -hmm. about time. And we have to, as a culture, get used to something that we don't want to accept, which is we're going to. We're going to be like this. What is today? March what? what where, where are we? I've lost track. We are, are we the 20th yet? March. It's a, yeah. So it's March 20th. So we're talking about at least two more months of just waiting. And, of course, people yeah. are going to test positive, again, in every industry. So I am hopeful, hopeful, not, not optimistic. I'm not pessimistic about it. But I'm thinking that if there can be a resumption of the season just in terms of the playoffs, if we can get to a point – where we've seen this flattening by, by June. Let's say we see it by June 15th. Why couldn't there be a playoff? And that's, we're talking three months. Oh, about Michael. Why couldn't there be a playoffs after that? Michael, I, I, Michael, I hear what you're saying. Here's, here's, the, here's my fear, because I'm hoping that you're right. Of course, I'll take it in empty gyms. I'll, you will take it with no more regular season, just the playoffs. Take it however we can get it. But what a flattening means is a prolonging. 
right? So, so in other words, yeah. we don't want everyone to get it at once, but there's an acknowledgement that a huge percentage are going to get it. So we want people to get it over time. That means that we could be in this kind of uh, social distancing mode for quite some time, and that's if we're successful containing it. If we're successful true, flattening, Mac. that pushes everything back. What it really comes down to, I think, is does the federal government make tests widely available? If that's the case, if they fail, as they've been failing to do that, then forget it. Because even if you can contract with private contractors, there will be legitimate criticism. Hey, wait a minute, there aren't enough tests to go around. We can't use these tests just for the NBA. But if the federal government is successful in, in, in generating these tests and making them available, then it would be legitimate for the NBA to grab a bunch of them and say, we've tested our guys, we've quarantined, the games will go on. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. Well, for me personally, I'm of the mindset that, Mike, I don't believe that a playoff can take place in September. I think that would be disastrous uh, because, first of all, you don't want to compete with the NFL. I think we've proven that. You don't want to compete with the NFL, even if it is the NFL NBA playoffs. And then, obviously, you're talking about pushing the start of next season back as well, which is something they'd have to take into consideration. I do believe that even though it wouldn't be a preference by anybody, uh, that you could have a playoff if, indeed, you can resume play in June. I think you could play basketball up until mid to the end of August and get away with it because I think that the ratings will soar and people will gravitate towards playoff basketball. The other thing that I would like to entertain, if y'all don't mind, and I'm, Molly, are we going to the next segment with this? Because I want to talk yeah, about I was the possibility the of other sports. Yeah. yeah. Say, wait, say that again, Stephen A. Sorry, uh, producer. No, I said I want to talk about the possibility of other sports because